Code Please. Welcome to Code Please. In this channel, I try to teach you a little bit about computer programming using the Elixir language. If you find this content useful, please consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. Now let's get into today's video. Hi guys, welcome to part two of our Honest Chat uh, application. Uh, in this part, we're going to install Tailwind CSS, which is a, a style sheet library that is going to help us uh, design our UI for the Honest Chat application in a, in a much easier way. And installing Tailwind is actually simple, but there are a few steps that we need to take in order to make it work. So let's get into it. And the first thing we want to do is install a couple of uh, node dependencies on our application. So we are going to the assets folder and then we're going to do npm install tailwind CSS, post CSS and auto prefixer. And we're going to do minus minus save dev to save as development um, dependencies, because when we publish our application into production, we don't actually need this because all the CSS will be uh, compressed into one single file. So we don't need all these tools in production mode. So after executing that command, we end up with the dependencies installed in uh, in Node in our package JSON. And now we need to create a new file for post CSS where we're going to uh, add the Tailwind CSS and the Auto Prefixer plugins. So in order to do that, we're going back to our project. We're going into Assets, and we're going to create a new file here called post CSS dot config.js and inside this this file we are going to paste some code in here we're basically going to declare some exports uh, with the two plugins and the order here is very important make sure not to mess it up i'm not going to go into why the the order is important but just trust me that tailwind css needs to come first then the auto prefixer now we can save this file so one thing i forgot to mention uh, was that my node version is very old and you might also have uh, an older version depending on, on the version of the Windows that you have and whether or not you installed Node in the past. So it's a good thing to upgrade Node. I am going into this uh, link here, node.js.org en download, and I'm just going to get the latest Node version, um, 16.13 at the time of this video. So I'm just going to install that. And once we're done installing Node, it's probably a good idea to close our console and uh, reopen it to make sure that the path are working as expected and if we now do node minus minus version we should get version 16. so now inside the assets directory we can do finally npx tailwind css init and this hopefully creates a file called tailwind.config.js which you can take a look at our, in our editor where we basically configure tailwind and we need to make some modifications in this file uh the first modification that we want to do is actually set up some uh, purge paths so to make sure that when we uh, compile to production tailwind will strip away unused uh, css classes that we don't have in our code so it's going to basically strip anything that ends with the js all js files and also in our since in uh, phoenix we can have some uh, inline html mainly in live views or templates uh, tailwind will also strip unused classes from those files and we also want to activate uh, just in time compiling uh, for tailwind and uh, this makes uh, tailwind generate the styles uh, on demand instead of um, generating everything in advance uh, when you initially build them so it's a bit faster in principle so we just need to put uh, mode just in time here as well and we should be done with the configuration now a few steps more that we need to take uh we can take a look at our app css so one thing we want to do is get rid of this uh default phoenix uh, css file that we're not going to need anymore and we can even delete the file uh entirely here we just need the main one and now we need to put in place the tailwind directives that import the tailwind uh, code or um css into our application and then we can also go into js and we should remove app css from here because we are using post css and we should remove this to make sure that es build does not take care of the css files it only takes care about uh, javascript and one next thing that we need to do is here on the configuration under the dev file we should add a watcher also for the CSS files to make sure that Tailwind recompiles whenever we change anything in, in terms of our CSS, Tailwind is going to get recompiled and all the assets are going to be uh, properly constructed. We also need to go and, and try to test this. 
So the best way to do it is just to go to into templates, page index, and we can replace the entirety of this file with a couple of lines just to test. So this has some classes um, from Tailwind. So if we see this kind of formatting being created in our uh, initial page, we know that we are on the right path. Okay, so one thing I realized was that since I ran um, npm install in the beginning with just uh, an older version of Node, and I think it gave an error, I just lost my package JSON file here. So we need to get that file back because that's the file that basically decides what kind of packages we are installing into npm. So let's just go and, and do package.json here. We create a, a simple one. And I am just going to copy paste this from another project. So here we are. And we have our dependencies here in principle. So let's just try to run npm install under the assets folder again. And in principle, it should all work. Papers last words. Okay, cool. And uh, getting back to our IDE, uh, what you see here on the scripts, it was added by me um, because I copied from the other project. You are not going to have this. And this is actually what you need to put in here to make the minification of the assets and basically the creation of the final assets that are, that are going to get deployed to production. And apart from changing the package JSON and adding these scripts here, we also need to go into mix EXS and down here on assets deploy, we need to replace the the yes build command with a bunch more stuff, basically uh, running npm run deploy, which is the script that we added to package JSON. Might get a bit confusing, but don't worry, we're almost done. So in principle, if we start our server now with ies x minus s mix dot phx mix phx dot server, which is a mouthful. So in case of like me, run, you run into this problem of starting your um, your Phoenix server with the new npx watcher for Tailwind, um, and after a long time fumbling around on the internet. Uh, there is a solution for this, and it is to rename the npx binary to bat instead of cmd. For some reason, Erlang ports trying to run this fails. If it's a, a cmd, it fails with the e access, which typically means something about file permissions. I don't know exactly what's going on. I know that Windows is not the best place to be running uh, Erlang code. Linux is much more suitable and also OS 10 because it's based on, on uh, Unix as well. But anyways, there you go. If you have this problem, just rename the npx binary and you can see exactly where it is here because um, Elixir tells you exactly the location where of the command that it's trying to run. So if we do rename it to npx.batch, then you run the, the watchers correctly and everything should be working. So now we can go back to our browser and open our web application at localhost 4000. And we can see that we already have some uh, markup here, which gives me a good indication. Well, I had to reload to get the actual uh, red text, but it's already a good indication that Tailwind is actually running. So that's all good. So now as a, a bonus uh, section of the video, let's say we want to split our CSS into multiple files because at some point this file is just going to become too big to be, ha to be handled in one single file. So let's say we want to add a CSS file specific for our components, for example, when we want to create, for instance, costume Tailwind components like buttons or other uh, things that you want to reuse across your application. So let's do that. Let's create a new file and we're going to call, call this file. Actually, let's create a new folder first and let's name this components. And then inside this components folder, we can create a buttons.css file where we are going to put some uh, markup for the button that we added on the index page. So this, this uh, href here that we have a low indico, we're going to declare this class button indico as being, uh, well, <laughs> indigo and having some markup to make it look like, like a bit more like a button. So we're going to save this. And then on the app CSS, we could be inclined to just use import here. And this should work in principle, right? If we go back to our application and we uh, refresh, nothing happens. And the reason is because due to the, um, to the evaluation order of Tailwind and the imports in CSS, we need to also um, install another NPM library called uh, PostCSS import, which is actually a plugin for PostCSS that we are already using. And it's super easy to do. We just need to go to our uh, console, get out of our uh, Phoenix server, and then go into assets and run NPM install PostCSS import minus minus save dev because we want to save it as a, a development dependency. And once this is done, 
we can go into our post CSS config file and we need to add post CSS import as one of the plugins. And this needs to come first, by the way. Uh, the order is again important so that uh, post CSS import takes care of all the imports first and then Tailwind comes after and replaces the directives and all that and uh, compiles everything. So now we can go back to our app CSS and there's one last step that we need to do. We need to replace all these Tailwind directives now with uh, imports and it's just a matter of putting um, the prefix Tailwind slash in there. And in principle, if we now go back to the console and start our server once again with mix phx server. If we go to our server and if we refresh, we can see that our button now has the correct CSS classes that we defined. You might have noticed that sometimes it takes a, a couple of seconds to refresh. You need to refresh sometimes um, a couple of times. And I think this is mainly due to Windows and not really the configuration that we that we used for Tailwind. So there we have it. Uh, Tailwind is installed. So now we can start to build our application. And I will see you on the next part of this series. Cheers. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and liking and sharing with your friends. It really helps the channel to grow. Thank you.